Okay, so we have Ryan, one of our students here at Hats to Tennis. He's a, uh, we call him SpongeBob. Right? He really absorbs the information. He's really done a great job in the short amount of time he's been here. So we're going to go through his forehand ground stroke. And what I want you to do is start thinking about some of the videos we've already done. We haven't done that many yet, but what about the bonus video? Ready position. Let's start there. The art is where you start. You always start at ready position. You can already see his hands are touched too close. His elbows are tucked into his side. What you're going to see when you see it from the back angle is that the racket is actually tilted to the left. It needs to be centered off his body so he can turn for a forehand and backhand equally. Okay. And again, as we know, if he's twisted at the beginning, he's going to be twisted in the middle, he's going to be twisted in the end. Okay. We also know that the elbow regulates backswing and racket face. So what do you think we're going to see with the elbow collapse? Okay. So hopefully you have a journal out there, you're writing down the information. This racket face is going to be open in the backswing, and it's going to go back too far. Okay. So it's not about what I say, now it's time to back it up with the why okay. and the information. Okay. So the why is the elbow's collapsed. Okay. The information is here. Elbow's collapsed. So at the turn, elbow starts to collapse. You can see the racket face open. Racket's going on the back side of his body. Okay, you want to keep the racket on the front side of your body. So again, if he has a great ready position, he's just going to turn in this position. Now we're David Ferrer. Okay, so David Ferrer, Roger Federer, and the art is where you start, and then you're going to keep it simple. Okay, so better player, simpler the system. Right here, this is not a simple system. The racket face is open. The racket cannot free fall. If the racket face is closed in the backswing, the racket face can free fall, and that's where you're going to get racket head speed from. Okay, if the racket face is open, then we have to recruit the bigger muscles and close the racket face. Now we're going to be rolling the racket. It's been going east-west. We want to swing north-south, path of the racket to the path of the target. Okay, because his elbow is collapsed at the beginning, it's collapsed at the turn, racket face is still open. So it can't free fall. He's going to have to roll the racket. The swing's not going to be able to go far enough out to the target. Okay, it's all about long hitting zone. If we were to give you one reason why we do these videos for you guys, it's because we want to give each of you a longer hitting zone. Okay, top pros in the world have long hitting zones. Okay. You can see he was close to his elbows at ready position. Now at the turn, I'm sorry, as he starts to swing forward, his elbow's too close to his body. It's tucked in here. He's got T-Rex. Right? He looks like a little T-Rex, just like this. Okay. Contact, there's one. So he's in contact. He's wide open to the hit. Belly button facing forward. His left hand's out. So goes the left hand, so goes the swing. We want to have left arm awareness. Okay. So step number one got to keep his elbow up, his ready position. Elbows are out of his side so we can just turn and keep the racket face closed. Now the racket face can free fall. Okay, so we're going to let the racket get below the level of the ball. We also see when he swings before, we go back in the video, you're going to see he doesn't get his hand down by his knee. Okay, he actually drops his wrist instead of getting his hand down, and that's where you're going to get injuries. That's where you have, you have wrist surgery by the time he's 14 and the kid's 10. Okay. Now again, so goes the left arm, so goes the swing. He doesn't get the racket below the ball, so we need our swing to be like a bike tire. We're going high, low, high, inside out to the target. Connect the dots. Okay, and because he doesn't get the racket below the ball, because the racket face is open in the backswing, he's going to be like a merry-go-round. So he's going to go 180 degrees when there's only 20 degrees of potential angle to put the ball, a little less than 20. Okay, so one click through the shot, and we're already pulling off to the left. Okay, so again, the fix for Ryan is to go to ready position. Right in ready position, elbows are out from the side, he's just going to turn and switch the grip in this position. Racket face is going to be closed. Then he's going to get his right hand down by his right knee, letting the racket free fall. He's going to be going inside out with the stroke out to the target. He has left hand awareness. His left hand's in front, right hand chasing left hand. Because again, if my left hand goes to the, to the left, so is my swing. The swing's going to follow. Okay, and I'm taking my palm, my racket face way out to the target. I'm going to finish with a roof over my head in this position. Okay, his tennis players were at war with the wrist. Ryan right there. The wrist won. Okay, we want to beat the wrist. So next we're going to go out. We're going to take Ryan. We're going to show you application to the forehand and how he's improved his forehand in the, in the last few weeks. Okay, we'll see you there. Okay, so we're on the court now with Ryan. We went through, we looked at his video, we saw what his common flaws were that we, we see in many players that come in. You know, again, ready position, elbows are in too tight as he turns. The racket face is wide open, gets on the back side of his body. So now we're going to go through the application on court of what he can do to fix that. And he doesn't need a tennis court to be great at tennis. We're lucky to be on the court right now and be working on this, but he could do this again. He could do this in his driveway. He could do this anywhere. Okay. Something to think about too is, um, and a lot of our younger players, we really instill this in them, is that it, it's a progression. Okay, so you start off, you're doing you know, cone hits, drop hits, you're doing the simple stuff, right? So you can do the fun stuff later. So then you start to go, it goes in progression, goes cone hits, drop hits, then you're doing rallying, then you do match play, you go to a tournament, then you go right back to doing cone hits again. You know, it's a build up breakdown process. Um, one of the things we put up on Facebook was Albert Pools did 15,000 to 20,000 shadow swings last year, okay? He's not too cool for school, so we have to make sure we're not too cool for school as tennis players, which I think we, we have become. And it's time to start getting back the other way where we can start to build up our players again, especially in the U.S. Okay, so one of the first drill Ryan's going to do is going to do um, 
Uh, two drills for us, he's going to do cone hits off the cone. So he's going to go through, he's going to do a multiple part swing. He's going to start off with ready position. Okay, so Ryan's going to take a big step back, take a big step to your left. So he's ready position, his hands are away from his body, his elbows are out from his side. Okay, so now he's going to go, he's going to turn for the volley. Okay, he's going to turn further, switch the grip. Then he goes three point landing. Okay, now, now three point landing is the way it should be evenly distributed. It shouldn't be all the way on the front leg, it should be over both legs. Now he's going to lift to contact. Okay, lift to contact. Then he's going to shake hands with the giant all the way up. Okay, he's going to work on space. Remember before he was, he was stuck in here like T-Rex. So he's got to work on those things. He still has that issue where he starts off a ready position, he brings the elbows back in. Okay, so that's the first progression. Now as we go through, he's still doing cone hits. He's just going to make it a two-part swing now. Okay, so you're ready position. Take a big step back, big step to the left. Now he's just going to turn and stroke. Turn, two-part one. Turn, switch the grip. Down swing, creates the upswing. He's going to finish. He should finish on balance. Okay. So then as we finish with that, now we go on to, to the progression in the alley. So go to the alley, Ryan, follow that ball. Good boy. Okay, so he goes out. Mom and dad buy him a, a basket. He's going to take it to the local courts, the local park. And he's going to be doing drop hits. Okay. Go ahead. He's just going to turn. Two part swing, turn. He's going to drop. He's going to hit and hold. He's going to make a swing match the shape of the alley. Straight line shots, connect the dots. Pass with the racket to the top of the target. Now, it's crucial for his game that he does get to the point where he is rallying, he is playing sets. But again, like we said before, you have to progress to the point you're playing matches, then you come right back to the drawing board again. You have to keep improving your technique. Tiger Woods another great example. All right, he spends the first part of his week working on technique, the last part of the week he's playing tournament. He's always trying to refine his stroke to make himself better and better. Okay, so for us as tennis players to keep getting better and then get away from going to the, to the lazy side, we have to, we have to put in the work. Right? There's no secret formula. It's a matter of putting in work to get to where you want to go. Okay, so Ryan's on his way.